Hello everyone to this new episode of Ask a Qualified Professional. We had a topic last time where we talked about counting calories and I um, received a lot of comments and Dr. Stephanie as well received a lot of comments on the topic. And one of them that I got from a couple of people was, well, if we're going to talk losing weight, I have to say that in my case, I have a poor metabolism and it's hard for me to lose weight. The, I think the main question is like, what it is actually to have a poor metabolism? Is there such a thing? How does it actually work? Because to be honest with you, I have no idea. It's something I heard so many times and I just realized I don't know what that means. So thank you, Stephanie, for joining in and taking the time to answer that question. What does that mean? Have a poor metabolism. Um, it's a, well, actually, it's a bit of a confusion, I would say, because lots of dancers think they have a poor metabolism, I get into detail in a second, but the poor metabolism in the sense of it is not working the way it is meant to work, that's only when we have autoimmune diseases like hypothyroidism or a liver and kidney disease, acute or chronic. Um, so that would be a condition to say, I'm kind of suffering from a poor metabolism, still in inverted comma uh, somehow. Okay. Um, but in dances, this is very often they think um, actually their body works against them, which mm -hmm. is pretty much associated with, you know, oh, my metabolism is not the way I want it to be. Um, and so my body is working against me. And so I'm just not happy about it. Um, and we have to really consider that in dancing, restricting, cutting out food groups and mm -hmm. under eating. So not eating enough for everything that you spend per day is so prevalent, which has an influence on the metabolism. But the thing is, that is acquired. That is due to the dietary patterns, that is due to restriction, that is due to some beliefs around food. And that is not inherently the dancer it's themselves. Yeah. So, when we so think if I understand that, right what you're saying, there is such a thing as having a poor metabolism, which is when your metabolism is not working right because you have some um condition that is triggering that and there is something else which is when your metabolism actually works fine but you're not giving it what it needs to yeah. have the results that you're looking for is that a good yeah. understanding of what you said absolutely so let's take the thyroid as a as a i think it's a good example um so if we look at the thyroid and the capital of dancers will have heard this or a couple of people will have heard this yeah. um, for thyroidism so this means the thyroid is underactive they are constantly cold they are constantly tired they easily put away they very often lose a lot of hair um, and this is associated with the hypothyroidism which is usually an autoimmune disease mm -hmm. so this means the body starts attacking the thyroid and then there's no longer enough thyroid hormones which are basically free and then this means everything is a bit down so and so you have that, to treat the condition to to get better okay but because, so if you don't have any of that yeah because but you're in, not getting the result you're looking for it's because of something else it's not your body working against you and that's the that's the belief that you want to tackle here right exactly so in this hyperism if it's acquired we see very very similar like blood pepper meters, for example, mm -hmm. that means someone not eating enough, which means in the acquired hypothyroidism or interactive thyroid, where the body actually really tackles the own, the own tissue and really um, attacks the thyroid gland, we would see very similar blood parameters to someone just not eating enough. Mm -hmm. They also don't have enough um, thyroid hormones, but it doesn't mean that the body attacks their own tissue. So no. this is this is really two ends yeah. of something that appears very similar, but is completely different. And the effect is, nevertheless, we need to think of the thyroid as like the fire for every cell in our body. You know, yeah. um, thyroid hormones, they, they really fire the metabolism in every single cell in our body. And without mm. it, because every single cell is affected or with very low levels of it, every that is affected and so somehow it appears logic i think that dancers then think oh gosh my metabolism is not working really 
it is not because but it was not well fueled in the first place this is why so no. it is behaving exactly as, we, as it should be yeah yeah and so, and, yeah, and i remember during the webinar you did with dr nikki for cordoba you were explaining very well when you do not eat enough but you're an athlete why is it that you're actually not losing the weight that you think you would you would lose and i think it's really important to to really watch that explanation because it's not understood very well. It can be counterintuitive. However, if you think of the body has a well-designed organism made to survive, that it makes complete sense. Yeah. And, and I, th I think this is a very, very important and key information for dancers and any athlete to understand why they need to make sure that they fuel enough. Because, right. yeah, that's what I hear, and I guess you too also a lot, is why is it that I'm not losing weight? Because I barely eat. Well, it's actually yeah. because you barely eat that you're not getting the body that you're looking for. Absolutely. Um, so it is like everything, underfueling, lots of things, but underfueling in particular starts in our brain. Our brain mm -hmm. is the right signal. And then there's, people always think like hormones, it's like reproductive hormones, but actually no, in our brain, there are a lot of hormones that really play key roles. Um, and so it starts in our brain. And this means um, basically from our brain, our thyroid sitting here doesn't get the right input. doesn't, you know, it just can't function. And so we don't have enough of our three thyroid hormones. At the same time, our adrenal glands, you know, these little caps sitting on top of our kidneys, they also are um, getting a signal that there's something not quite in order. And so they start producing our main or key stress hormone cortisol like crazy. So this, this goes up. Thyroid hormones go down, but stress hormone goes up. And stress hormone up means for the body, there's something not right. There is like, a, yeah. it goes like, Thing, you know i don't know what it is but there is something like threatening me and my existence yep. and so the body goes for what well, okay um i have no idea how long this is going to go on so i actually have to store a lot of body fat because this stores a lot of energy i've got to give away whatever i can and in dances this is very often muscle it's really really uh, often muscle tissue and attention and memory Yep, exactly. The brain is under fuel. So like um, wait, what? I don't remember that. Wait. Make smart decisions. Making smart decisions. Did I say that? Effective, you know? Um, so this is a way why you can't achieve the body that you want to achieve. But on the other hand, there's also, as I just said, there's our thyroid. And we mentioned this like five minutes ago, this is the fire to every cell in our mm -hmm. body. If that isn't working well, also plays of course a role into body composition favorable or unfavorable for dance. So how do I know if I have poor metabolism for real or if it's because I'm not allowing my body to get the best results it can have? How yeah. do I know that? Do I do blood work? I just go see a doctor? And... Yeah, so blood work, yes, definitely. Um, but best is to go and see um, a doctor and a dietitian because mm -hmm. it happens very often as nutrition education at med school speaking from my own experience is next to nothing they go with the blood work and very often that like, nikki sees it a lot too they go like oh you know this looks a little bit like hypothyroidism so probably does it run in the family maybe you always have a distant relative where something okay. related runs in the family you know um, and so they go like, oh, yeah, then, okay, you get some synthetic thyroid hormone and then this problem is going to be solved. It is totally not solved if a dietitian looks at it and figures out that you're actually not eating enough and that mm -hmm. you have very high cortisol levels and that, you have a, that your dietary patterns are not supporting your dancing. So my recommendation definitely would be to see both. To see Otherwise, both and make sure that they talk to each other so that they can confirm their understanding. And then, so if I have no condition and I have to change the way I eat? It is, it depends. Um, it, can, it can be really like easy going and a, a pretty fast recovery if someone really unintentionally with the under eating and it's like, um, oh, really, I did do that. Oh, that was not good. And then, you know, they start to time their snacks and meals better. They eat more overall, problem solved. 
Um, it happens. It, it really happens. It is not the majority of dancers because unfortunately the majority of dancers is really those under eating. Um, under eating kind of on purpose, I have to say. Um, so this means they try to restrict or they've got some pretty weird nutrition wise wherever from, you know. So it's kind um, of the younger or the earlier you notice that the better because yeah, I guess your experience and my experience is that it is on purpose, but not necessarily conscious. And um, it, the more you wait, the harder it is to realize that you are actually under eating. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And because you, is... sorry, uh, what I wanted to actually say is because you're kind of losing the sense of being hungry. Mm. And because you lose that, you don't really believe you're under eating. Because mm -hmm. this was one of the answer I get, I don't know about you, but one of the answer I get sometimes is, but I don't feel hungry. Yeah, you don't. Because exercise stresses appetite. So mm -hmm. this is why we have to be very careful with the intuitive eating approach. Of course, we do want really our dancers to have a good level of intuitive eating. But if it means that they do not consider that um, exercise suppresses appetite, then everything goes out of the window. You know, then it was just smoke and mirrors. Um, and so it does require some sort of teaching. And in, in some, we will probably figure out some severe degree of disordered eating and some will even be diagnosed with a clinical uh, mm -hmm. eating disorder. And that is just the reality in the dance world. I think we just have to say it as it is. Well, I guess also it depends how do you define disorder. Oh, is is the definition the same for you yeah. and for me? Where Where do we bridge the limit so maybe yeah. to keep it simple for everyone and i'm not saying what you said was difficult it's just i want to make sure they can walk out of here and understand so first of all we talked about the difference between a metabolism that is not working properly is not functioning properly because of some condition and um metabolism is actually working how it's designed uh, but you are not giving it the proper condition for it to get the result that you're expecting. So you're thinking that you should be losing weight because that's basically what we're talking about today. And you're not, but it's not because your metabolism is working against you. Did uh, I summarize properly? Yeah, absolutely. It is keeping you alive. It is adapting to you not fueling enough. And this has consequences, as we just said, um, con uh, considering um, body composition and your stress hormone. Um, and it's very important to realize the difference between the two and make sure that you get to see a doctor and a dietitian to understand where you where do you stand and maybe it's a bit of both also. Um, but it's very important you understand where you stand because you would not approach these two um, situations the same way. Not at all. So not at all. Not at all. Medication is if you have a real condition, um, be that like autoimmune or chronic um, kidney, liver disease or so, this is usually treated with medication. And I think the main message that I want people to get out of that is if you think you have a pro metabolism that is preventing you from having the best body, please go and see someone because I don't think this is true. Absolutely. There is no reason for you not to have the best body you want. Absolutely. Honestly, the this is this is yes now, but probably if we looked at the numbers, so we would probably be somewhere like around ninety percent where we have trouble with like fueling well, mm -hmm. and maybe ten percent that might even be a very, um, let's say, um, I might overestimate even a bit where we have some sort of metabolic condition. Maybe it is even closer to 95.5. I would have to look it up. I don't even think anyone has ever done a study on this. But the majority of problems we see is not the metabolic problem. It is the fueling problem. I just have one question um, related to this. Is it possible that there are food that we, um, what's the word, we digest better than others? Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm getting Right. So well, so I rem so, you know I've worked a lot with um, bodybuilders and bikini competitors as well, and there were some thought, and you know they're a bit very similar in terms of how do they handle the diet and the nutrition, <laughs> um, and there were some thought that um, some people they don't really digest very well grains, so it's better if you take it out of your diet because you just don't digest it very well, and as soon as you take it out, everything gets better. Is it a real thing or is it 
Mm. Not really, um, because I mean, there is a grains, legumes, Australia, for example, they are advocating for implementing more because they do have health benefits. And it is rare. And again, normally it is conditions like celiac disease, which mm -hmm. is an immune disease, where we've got to get the grains out of the diet, where we really have to cut them out because otherwise they do have this reaction. Um, but most of the time, again, talking about dancers now, um, digestive problems, they think are associated with certain foods. Mm -hmm. More often than not due to underfueling, because if we're not eating enough, our digestion is affected as well. Okay. And usually in the sense of bloating, constipation, diarrhea, mm -hmm. all these, you know, uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah. But, and so this is because we're under fueling or this is because we were cutting up some food and bringing it back in the diet needs a little bit of adjustment? Yeah, uh, very often um, athletes and dancers, they cut it out themselves and then they try to reintroduce it. And usually it is, it is advisable to do it gradually with a dietitian mm -hmm. so that you are not putting in or putting back more into your diet than mm. they Reminds me of the hyper protein diets and everybody's like, I'm so bloated and everything was like, yeah, because you went from 80 gram to 212, I think. <laughs> protein actually causes, uh, causes bloating. So it is really good if you've got someone looking, looking at the numbers. And um, by the way, I just saw that Lena asked the question whether stress oh, and sorry. weight gain um, is really associated with each other. Um, so yes, just to really hammer that point home. So when the body thinks it is threatened because you are, let's assume, under eating in a dense context, for example, um, then one gram of fat or one kilogram of body fat stores more than twice yes. the energy that muscle tissue would store. So the body is, of course, making the smartest decision it can make in this moment, which means mm -hmm. it breaks down some muscle tissue but stores a bit more fat tissue because there's a whole lot of energy. Keep you going through this thread because how do we know how long it lasts? So the body is just really doing what it has to do. And then in the end, you end up either with the same weight but a very different body composition you can be the same way, but your genes can nevertheless be really tight because mm -hmm. muscle got broken down and fat got stored. Um, or you can really also put on weight, which then very often um, goes together with thyroid being downregulated and, you know, just the body not getting the energy it needs. I really need to go through my album photo because I want to put out there a photo of me when I was 14. I was the exact same weight as now, but I was like this. That would be interesting. Um, and yeah, that's, that's a topic that was very important for me because I was one of those who thought I had a poor metabolism when I was a young kid. I was really, really big, mainly because I was put on cortisone, um, because of my asthma and I was never told to change my diet to go with the cortisone. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and that lasted for years. And then of course, then you have all the aftermath of dealing with all the weight that you put on because of the cortisone rather than anything else. And um, I obviously went through under eating and then thinking I had a poor metabolism because I was not losing the weight I was expecting. Mm -hmm. And just to keep sharing on the metabolism thing, it's only actually when I started working with bodybuilders who were eating so much <laughs> that, and they pushed me there and they were like, just eat, 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 eat. I was like, I felt like I was force fed. Oh my gosh. Uh, which I don't recommend, but I'm just sharing my experience yeah. as it was. Just like nothing is perfect. But it made me realize that, yes, my body can change mm. if I work differently. I was working out more and I was eating more and I never felt hungry at all. I also learned the difference between being hungry and being thirsty which was because of the cortisol also that um, messed up a little bit my senses. Uh, but I felt that it's a very important topic because it's too easy to hang on to the belief, I have a poor metabolism, my body is working against me, I will never be who I want to be. And I find that very sad that you guys out there think your body is against you. Like It's like yourself is against yourself. 
And I really don't want you to walk around thinking that your yourself is sabotaging yourself. This you have this no, can be true. You can have a yeah. condition, so please go check. But if you don't, go work for being the best you can be. Don't don't hang on to that belief that is driving you down. This is it's not cool. Yeah, and I mean, really, most of the time. So this life is to empower you because most yeah. of the time you don't even have an idea how much you can influence yourself. It is not all down to our genes. It is not all down mm -hmm. to what we've been given, you know? It I was believing that no. as well because half of my family, they're chubby. I mean, I will, I will always be a little bit on the rounder side. That's the body type. If I don't do anything, because honestly, I'm not a professional dancer at the moment, so I don't, I don't care. And I'm always a bit rounder than my brother. My brother is the skinny stick <laughs> in the family. And that's okay. But if I want, I can have his body. Yeah. Without it's, starving myself. It's, so much it's actually the opposite. I have to work out a lot and eat a lot and then I can have his body. I used to and I didn't feel like it was difficult to maintain that body yeah. shape. Mm -hmm. And that, that's it's what I not... wanted with you that people get out of that. It doesn't have to go with suffering. No, not at all. Oh, no, not at all. You can actually really enjoy life and you can enjoy your foods. And getting to this question, how long does it take? It is absolutely individual. It is dependent on how long have you been in it? What have you actually done to your body? What is the degree of your underfueling? Um, and also, what are your beliefs about it? Because the stronger the belief, the harder is it to get rid of them. So the journey will be very different for everyone. Um, and there's another one. Can you get fat from eating I think less? people don't really like when we're saying it's in very individual, but I think it's important to realize every journey is different. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the second question is, can you get, uh, we kind of almost uh, already said that, can you get fat from eating less than you're using? And I was mentioning in the, in the webinar you did with Dr. Nikki for Cor de Valley, you're explaining exactly how you can actually store fat because yeah. you're eating less than what you're spending. Yeah. And Nikki always has this, this, um, this image of the tutu. You able to bring yourself into so you restrict and for the next um, uh, fitting you go in and you think like oh wow you know I lost a kilo so I might fit into the tutu so much better but actually your body just broke down muscle tissue and stored more fat because it feels threatened and the tutu is even tighter than it was last time which is yeah. yes muscle and fat definitely not the same density I, I, I really, I'm going to go through my album photo because I think yeah. I went through every size and shape possible. I am, <laughs> I will be your worst client, but I am the best person to, to demonstrate all of the crazy diets that are out there. I probably tried everything. Um, and yeah, which is why I really want to share on all those topics because I don't want people to go through what I've been through. It's, it's not the, it's not the path. It's not healthy. It's, wasn't necessary it wasn't required took me 20 years to realize to be at peace with food guys I, I wish you guys just grow up at peace with food you know? yeah absolutely Early just enjoy it there's just enjoy it. exactly and you can you can the science is there to support you it is it's not rocket science even, but we have to get it out there so which is why we were doing this live bit by bit. So please guys keep commenting because this is how we got the idea of the next topic of how, like what are the things you need to understand? What are the little pieces of the puzzle that you need for you to empower, to be empowered and um, live your best life? Yeah, right, all right. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you everyone. Thanks for your questions. Keep sending them.